Hi everyone, it's Cassandra from GarageBand 101 and in this video I will show you how to build a drum kit using the AU sampler. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a software instrument and I'm going to load the AU sampler. I just click here, you go under AU instrument, Apple, AU sampler, stereo. Once you've opened the AU sampler, it automatically comes with a sound, which is an annoying sine wave. You can use it to do music if you like it. But to remove this sound, you need to add another sound first. To do so, you click here. You select a sound that you want. Let's go under hi-hats. Let's click on hi-hat 6. And now you click on your new sound, you click on the sign 110 again, and you click on the minus to delete it. Once you've added your sound inside of GarageBand, what you need to do is to set the range. Let's say for instance, I would like this sound to be played on the C4, I have to set the key range to C4. So I'm going to delete the C1 and change it to C4 all the way to C4 and change the root note to C4. So that's basically it. That's how you build a drum kit. You basically repeat this process over and over again until you've built a drum kit that you'd like. To add sound faster inside of the AU sampler, you can click here, add samples, select a sample that you'd like, open, and now you do the same exact thing that we did with the close hi-hat. You click on the sound and then you set the range. For instance, here, this one was on C4. Oops. The hi-hat was on C4. Let's put the kick on D4. Okay, so now the range of all of the sound has been set to only play on one key. You also have the option of moving the sound around if you want to set it on another key, if you want to. You can also extend the range of the sound if you want to play it over multiple keys. You also have the option of reducing the volume or increasing it, and you can change the pan now, this is in the middle. You can pan it a little bit to the right or to the left. Another thing that you can do with the AU sampler is to map a sound. I'm going to do that with a flute. I'm going to add a flute sound and I'm going to remove the kick. And now you can play it over your keyboard. You can use the AU sampler to pitch a sound that you'd like, but it doesn't time stretch the sound. So therefore, as you go higher in octaves, the sound is going to become shorter. And the same thing for if you go lower in an octave, the sound can become longer and sound kind of weird. So you can use the AU sampler if you want to pitch a sound up and down. If it stays within a short range, let's say just one octave, it could work. But if it goes like two octave, three octave, it might not sound the best. Once your sound kit is created, you can save it. You click here, save as. You give it a name, click on save, and all of your saved sound kits are going to be here. Okay guys, so here are a couple of things that you need to keep in mind when using the AU sampler. When you create a new layer, a layer is kind of the equivalent of a new bank or a new sound kit, but within the same preset. So let's say I would create a new layer, it's kind of like I would create another sound kit. But if you only stay into one layer, you will only be able to play the sound from this layer. One more thing that you need to keep in mind is that to remove 
One more thing that you need to keep in mind is that in a layer, you always have a minimum of one sound. Let's say that you don't want the flute sound anymore and you want to delete it. Make sure to add another sound first and then delete the flute sound. You click on the plus sign right here. You select a sound that you'd like and then you click on this sound one time because even when you load another sound first, you might not be able to still delete the initial sound that you want. So you have to click on your new sound, click on the old sound, and then delete it. One last thing that I want you to keep in mind, guys, is that you should be able to play the sound from your drum kit on an external MIDI keyboard or with the MIDI typing, clicking on Command K. But oftentimes, it doesn't work. A lot of people have been telling me that the AU sampler doesn't work when they try to use it on their MIDI keyboard. And the only answer that I have for that is that GarageBand needs to fix it. It is an internal bug. Um, it happened to me multiple times. I've been trying to build drum kits. The AU sampler crashes or I cannot play the sound. It doesn't come through the output. My CPU is low. I try not to have multiple windows open. The only recommendation that I have for you guys when the AU sampler doesn't function well is to close the software, open it again, or restart your computer. And if it doesn't work, what you need is an external plugin. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to sample with external plugins very, very efficiently inside of GarageBand. All right, so this is how you build a sound kit using the AU sampler. Thank you so much for watching and please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if this video was useful. And if you want to learn more about GarageBand, feel free to head to GarageBand101.com. Have a great day.